tell you, it's quite the adventure <laughs> to go to the post office and ship a book. I just shipped a book to Australia and I stood in a long line at the post office and when I get to the front, finally, in front of the line and ship to ship out my book, well, they have, they give me a form to fill out for international shipping. So I have to get out of the line, go stand by some table, fill out this form, and then go back to the back of the line because they didn't say, come to the front of the line when you're done and we'll take you. So I had to stand in line once again. And I've been in the post office for a little bit over an hour just to mail a book. <laughs> All right, that's me venting. Um, I want to lift up somebody in prayer. We're not going to beg God. We're going to thank him for what he's already done. And we're going to just speak out life and health into this person. She's young. She's only 13 years old. What the medical condition is doesn't matter. We don't need to give it a name. Sometimes when you name something, I'm not saying it's inappropriate or anything, but sometimes we think of a name of something and we make that name either something small or something great. Oh, like if you say it's cancer, that that's something great. Oh, it's a huge thing to get rid of. But if you pray for somebody that has a cold, you might think, well, that's something small and easy, right? When really, cold, cancer, doesn't matter with the Lord, right? He says, you only need a mustard seed side of faith to move a mountain. He didn't say, you need mountainous faith to move something that's a mustard seed size. And when he talks about this mustard seed size of faith, it's not the amount, it's the quality. Do you understand that? It's the quality, not the quantity. So do you believe right? Do you believe right? Unbelief is kind of I was talking to the father of this girl yesterday. His name's Rick. His daughter's name is Sarah. I met Rick and Sarah, his other daughter Savannah, and his wife Maggie yesterday. We, they came from Georgia, and they um, are visiting California, and they drove down to San Diego yesterday to meet me at 1 p.m., and we ate at a restaurant together. Right, right in front of the ocean, and it was we had a great experience together. And Rick is like myself, came out of the Jehovah's Witnesses religion, and he told me that my YouTube channel really helped him a lot. Him and uh, his wife wasn't raised Jehovah's Witness, but um, but it helps her. It helps her to understand. Watching my channel kind of helps her to understand what he has gone through in his life, and there's so many similarities with Jehovah's Witnesses. It's incredible. So, we're having lunch and all that, and then after lunch, Rick and I kind of went outside, we were talking, and the girls were taking pictures, you know, there's the ocean, and all these, it's just nice scenery, and Rick went and I went over to the side, and we were talking, and he was telling me about his daughter having this condition, it's pretty serious, right? So, when you have something that can take your life, that's a pretty serious thing, and And he desired that we could pray for her. And I'm like, oh yeah, that is my desire too. You know, Jesus, when he had a, a leper approach him, the leper says, if you desire, a Greek word, it's called thalo. Thalo is a Greek word that they used to translate what he said. If you desire, you have the power and the ability to make me clean. He said, they translated the word power and ability into the Greek word dunamai, which means power and ability. So the leper questioned the Lord's desire, but he 
declared that the Lord does have the power and the ability. He believed in his power and ability, but if you desire, he said, if. That's the question, right? Well, Jesus didn't commend the leper for recognizing that he has the power and the ability to heal. Oh, that's right. I have the power and the ability to heal. Okay. No, he, he said, you know what? I do desire. I do desire. I say low, he said. He tells the leper, be made clean. And leprosy had no other choice but to flee from his the leper's body. Jesus didn't say, leprosy, I command you out. He didn't even name the leprosy, right? I mean, he could have, but he didn't. He just said, be made clean. And the, le and the leprosy had no choice but to leave this guy's body because he's unclean. They shout, unclean, unclean, when the leper's around. So to be clean, leprosy had to flee. It's kind of like when, when Jesus saw a fig tree and it wasn't in season to produce figs, right? It was out of season. It wasn't the season for figs. But here comes the Son of God, the creator of all things. That fig tree's purpose is to produce fruit. Whether in season or out of season, in the presence of the Son of God, the creator, this fig tree should have said, uh-oh, here comes Jesus, let's produce fruit. Not only for him, but also for his followers that are with him. But it didn't. So Jesus doesn't curse the fig tree. He doesn't say, hey, fig tree, I curse you to the root. He just said, may no one ever eat of your fruit again. No, may no one ever partake from you again. <laughs> so the fig tree had no choice. If no one is to eat of me again, and my purpose is to feed people, then I have no other choice but to die at the root. And that's what happened to it. Peter's the one that said, look at the tree that you cursed. But Jesus never did say a curse to the tree, although I guess it is a curse to tell somebody, hey, you're good for nothing and worthless, right? You're worthless and good for nothing. You plant that into somebody, they're gonna believe it. The fig tree had no other choice but to die because the Lord told the fig tree, basically, you serve no purpose anymore. Now, when you pray for somebody that has some sort of sickness, whether it's a disease or a cancer or whatever it is, there are people that want to be specific. Tell me specifically what you have when really... The simplicity of it is, I speak life over you right now. And if you're laying hands on them and you don't even have to touch that spot on them, you know, if they have a problem, put your hand on their knees. Well, I guess you could, but what if you're a man praying for a woman that's not your wife? That woman has breast cancer. Do you really want to lay your hands on her? Right? You don't have to do it that way. You know, you could actually simply take somebody by the hand, hand in hand, and just speak life over them right now in Jesus' name. I speak life. And guess what? Anything that's not life has to flee. Cancer isn't life. It's death, right? So it has to flee. It leads to death. So bye, cancer. Bye, disease. Bye, whatever it is. Bye-bye. Go in Jesus' name because you have no other choice but to flee because you're not of life. Do you understand that? So you don't have to be too particular about the way you say things. You don't have to be too specific. You could speak life over somebody. You could speak light over somebody. You could say from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet, be healed in Jesus' name, right? I mean, some things you don't even have to lay hands on. Jesus said, speak to the mountain and it'll move. Right? But he did say you can lay hands on the sick as well. It's how the Spirit moves you. So yesterday as Rick and I are talking, and 
Jehovah's Witness, he's not a Jehovah's Witness any longer, but you know, he's asking if there's still any of that Jehovah Witness influence or thinking in my mind anymore, you know, because he was describing how that stuff is, sometimes it just seems like it's so hard to get rid of. Do you know how you get rid of wrong believing, you guys? Do you know what unbelief is just not believing right? You believe something, but you're not believing the right way. So, what religion does to you is it fills you with unbelief. You might say, no, I believe, I believe, but it fills you with unbelief. Like, like check it out. Nimrod, Nimrod, back in the time of his day where he was building this tower, they called Babel, Babel, a tower. What was the tower for? Trying to reach God. And that's what religion does. It's always trying to reach God, trying to reach God. If you just climb high enough, you just go far enough, you reach God. <laughs> That's religion. Where Jesus, through the Spirit, says, My life I give to you freely. It's through the abundance of my grace you can receive this. It's yours as a free gift. It's not something you need to work for. It's not something you need to purchase from me. It's not something that you need to earn for me. It's not a wage. It's a free gift. You can find that all throughout Scripture, right? In the New Testament. Paul says it, Book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 17, that righteousness is a free gift to you, free gift through the abundance of grace. And it, he even says that death once reigned, through the one man Adam. Reigned means to rule. Death ruled over everyone because of one man Adam. But much more you can reign in life or rule in life over problems. You reign over problems. You rule over problems in life. Is cancer something to reign over, put under your feet? Of course it is. You're above that. You're above sickness. You reign over these things. They don't reign over you. But sometimes those things reign over people because of the wrong believing. Do you understand? Because the Holy Spirit promises you'll reign in life. You'll rule, right? Because of the one man, Jesus Christ. And you receive this right to reign through the abundance of his grace right? It's not the abundance of your good deeds. It's the abundance of his grace. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 it says you are saved by grace. And the thing that grabs hold of salvation, because grace says salvation is free. So grace is holding salvation in its hands and saying salvation is free. Take it. And how do you take it? Through faith. Through faith. Not works. Not self-efforts, but faith, right? Even the word faith ties in with the word believe. Faith in Greek is pistis. Believe in Greek is pistiuo. Pistis is jammed into that word pistiuo. Pistiuo, which means to believe, is the combination of faith and trust. Now, the combination of believe and trust is the Greek word faith. So these three words, believe, faith, trust, they are triune, they work in harmony with one another, they're in covenant, right? Triune, meaning three unified as one. Wrong belief is like this, and this is what I described it to my friend Rick. Did I mention the names of Rick's family? I think I did. Rick, Maggie, his wife, Sarah, his daughter, Savannah, his daughter. So, Sarah's the one. I told her, your name means princess. <laughs> Sarah, see, a princess is of royalty. A princess is the daughter of the king. Do you understand that? A princess should reign, not have things reigning in her life, trying to take her life. So what she needs is people to believe for her, right? 
to put faith into that situation for her. That's what the body is for. One's down, the other lifts them up. And how much greater if there's more numbers in the body to lift that one up, right? Just takes one person's faith. It could take her faith to receive it. It could take my faith to give it. It could take your faith that gives it out. I want that faith to hit this person. I want that faith to give life to this girl, Sarah, right? Death cannot reign. Life reigns in her. Do you believe this, my friends? See, unbelief is like this, what I was telling Rick. Let's say you take a bottle of soda. Once in a while, I like to drink a Diet Coke. So let's say you take a bottle of Diet Coke and you unscrew the cap and you put it, put it under running water. Jesus says, if you receive me, I'll give you rivers of living waters, life-giving waters that'll run not only in you, but overflow out of you into others, right? You'll be an overflow. So, so if you take waters and you run a faucet of water into a bottle of that Diet Coke, you know the color of cola. It's kind of got that brownish color. Well, if you run waters in there, what happens is cola comes out, water goes in. Cola comes out, water goes in. Cola comes out, water goes in until eventually that whole bottle is filled with crystal clear waters and that cola is gone. Do you understand? And that's what you got to do with unbelief. You flood your mind with believing right and unbelief, which is just believing wrongly, will flood out of you. And before you know it, you're so filled with with believing right, there's no more room for unbelief or believing wrongly. Do you understand this? That's what the Lord's doing with all of us right now. He's been helping us to believe right and get rid of this residual unbelief because that unbelief or believing wrong, that comes from the spiritual wicked forces of darkness that are at work against you. They form weapons against you. Do you understand? Yes, there are weapons that are formed against you. But fortunately, if you're a believer and you take faith and you grab hold of the word of God, God says, my word which goes forth from my mouth shall not return unfulfilled, empty, or void, right? Now, the enemy wants his words to go forth from his mouth and not return empty or void. So his words are like fiery missiles. His words are weapons that are formed against you. Some people grab hold of his words and believe them, receive it, and make it their own. Some people reject those words because they put up their spiritual armor. And what happens is the word of the enemy ricochets off of them and then returns to him and he has to flee seven different directions, right? God's word, which goes forth from his mouth, shall not return empty or void. So he puts his word in this book right here. And our job is to grab hold of it and to trust it, believe it, and make it our own. And then... Those things, those weapons formed against you, they shall not succeed at doing what the enemy sent them out to do against you. Do you understand this? Do you believe this? I don't care if somebody says, well, I already have the cancer now. I have the sickness now. I have it. Listen, the leper have the leprosy, right? But Jesus cast it out. He spoke, be clean and leprosy had no choice but to flee from this man's body. You speak life over somebody from head to toe and you have faith, even if that person you're praying for doesn't have it, your faith. But the, did, did Lazarus need faith for Jesus to raise him from the dead? Or was it Jesus' faith that raised Lazarus from the dead? Now in our spirit, you have the faith of Christ. You're not lacking at all. Now we need to trust in what we already have. Trust in it, put our faith in it, believe in it, and then speak it out. Jesus said, speak to the mountain and it shall move. 
He didn't say punch the mountain. He didn't say put some dynamite on the mountain and explode. He says speak, right? And even if that problem seems like a mountain, it only takes a tiny little mustard seed quality of faith. So if we can just lift up together a prayer, we don't beg, we declare, thank you, Lord, that by your stripes, Sarah is healed. We speak over Sarah life from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet. In Jesus' name, amen. Be healthy, Sarah. Be whole. Be made well. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you say amen with me, that means you are in agreement with that prayer. How powerful is that? Now listen, I'm not praying again today because I'm unbelieving, right? Oh, he's praying again? He's praying again, isn't that showing a lack of faith? No, I wanna just get a bunch of believers in on this as well, right? Even Jesus, he prayed over a blind man once and the blind man, what do you see? Well, I see men like they're trees and Jesus, okay, okay, let's do it again, right? Let's do it again. So we're doing it again, you guys. Not because we're lacking faith or anything like that, but I really want, I want this to manifest in this girl. And if you have any problems in your life right now, and you just grab hold of the word, because the word of the Lord is, by his stripes you are healed. Do you understand that? You are healed. So it's like the book of Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a person thinks in their soul, right? In their soul, nefesh is the Hebrew word, as a person thinks in their soul, nefesh, so are they. Are you thinking life? Are you taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ? Christ says life, not death. Are you grabbing hold of those thoughts of life, taking them captive because of his obedience? Now life is yours, right? Not death, as a man think, as a woman thinks, so are they. Are you healed in Jesus' name? Does his word say you are healed in Jesus' name? Yes, it does say it. Do you see something maybe in your body? Do you feel something? Body, mind, whatever it is that's attacking you, that's keeping you sick, keeping you down. Are you? Well, then let's flood. Let's flood your thoughts with the word of God and get rid of that old believing, that old stuff right now, that old cola I was talking about. Flood, flood, flood your mind right now with the word of God, which says, by his stripes, you were healed. Peter said that as if it's already done. So you have all the health inside of your spirit, all the life inside of your spirit. In your spirit, there is no death. There is no darkness, right? You have all the fullness of Christ in your spirit, and he's housed inside of your body. So this is in you. Now we got to get that spirit to move through our soul into our very flesh, right? Through your soul. Because what did John say? Third John verse two. Third John verse two. Beloved, I pray above all. I wish above all that you could be <laughs> in prosperity, that you could prosper and be prosper means to do well on your journey to do well on your journey right prosper and be in health be in health he didn't say be healed he said be in health so healing is already yours so if the healing's yours we want that to go through you so you're in good health right so you just walking in health all the time. Sickness tries to get into you, can't do it. Sorry, sickness touches you, it dies because you're in health. Psst, gone. Can't get in. Do you understand this? So I speak to every one of you out there that chooses to believe these words, grab hold of them. Say amen with your mind, with your heart, right? Be believing it when you say amen. I declare from the top of your heads to the bottom of your feet, in Jesus' name, I speak life, I speak health, I command every form of sickness and darkness to get out of you in Jesus' name. 
in Jesus authority. Be made well. Be in good health right now in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for watching you guys. Thank you so much for your prayers. Rick, Maggie, Sarah, Savannah, it was a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much for treating me to lunch yesterday. And thank you so much for the ride home you gave me. Because I drove in a lift car to the restaurant because I realized, oh man, there's probably going to be no parking at the beach, right? So if I go to the beach, I usually get a ride down there because sometimes parking you have to pay for and that parking can be more expensive than having somebody give you a ride there. So I got a ride there and I was going to get a ride back through Lyft, L-Y-F-T, but Rick and his family, they drove me back home and, and they even got to meet my roommate, Judy. Judy was coming outside to dump some trash and she was out there when, when we pulled up and they remembered me telling the story of when... um. Judy was diagnosed with stage four cancer. And I commanded that cancer and she believed it. I commanded it to die at the root and be gone in Jesus name. And she was on chemotherapy, stage four cancer. And that what they do to the chemotherapy, they're trying to shrink these tumors that were in her legs, her leg, and um, so that they can surgically remove them. Because if you saw these cancers, they look like octopuses. They've got these tentacles that just spreading their roots out, right? Well, anyway, so Judy's got stage four. I'm commanding cancer out of her body. We're partaking of the uh, uh, of communion together, the bread and the wine, the bread representing the body of Jesus Christ that was broken so we could be repaired that was wounded so that we could be healthy, right? Healed. And then he pours out his blood, what that wine represents, right? His blood, which washes us clean, makes us righteous, which saves us, which makes you the righteousness of God in Christ, right? So Judy and I partook of these things together, right? So when she met these people yesterday, you know, they were saying hi to her. And Judy says, he healed me, pointing to me. He healed me. I'm like, no, no, it's Jesus. Jesus healed you, right? Yeah. And that's what it is, you guys. It's not me. It's not you. It's Jesus. He heals. We speak in his authority. His. His. We don't speak in our authority. It's his authority, right? And he told us we can speak, right? We can cast out. We can lay hands. All these things work. But... He says, these things will follow those that believe. So trying to get you to believe, my friends. All right, God bless you all. I love you all. We'll see you in the next video.